Hi. Uh, thanks for great uh, presentation so far. Uh, I'm going to be presenting something of a little smaller scale, uh, an architectural project. So for you that don't know us, I, I work for Vectorworks, uh, which is a design software solution for uh, architectural firms. And I'll be presenting uh, the Talat project uh, developed by uh, our clients, uh, Sean Harrington Architects. Uh, so, Sean Harrington Architects have been around for a while now. Uh, their sort of driving principles are sustainable design, uh, placemaking, and um, craftsmanship. So, um, this is the project, so it's um, a development of uh, 81 apartments for older residents in the uh, southern side of uh, Tala near, uh, near Dublin. And it's a sheltered housing development, uh, having support facilities for, uh, for elderly residents. So um, that's the site, so the proposed site has this uh, kind of long and shallow uh, geometry and the shallow depth coming in uh, in this north to south direction so some of the challenges that they were uh, they were facing was to to maximize the southern orientation for all of uh, the residents uh, regardless of, sort of which uh, which part of the site their uh, their flat is in, and uh, ensure that no apartments were exclusively oriented to uh, to the north. Okay, so uh, this is bas uh, basically the diagram showing uh, showing the the, the concept, um, knowing having that in mind and. Um, you know they had the main communication along uh, along the northern um, northern part of the site and uh, having uh, having south facing uh, internal courtyards. So um, the blocks uh, are it's divided into fourth uh, north and south facing uh, blocks. So uh, the blocks are between three to four stories and are similar but not exactly uh, the same. So that was one of the design, design challenges uh, that they had is how to, how to model less repetition basically, as less as possible. So that's the site plan. That's, so if you can see the external spaces in, in that uh, diagram over there, pointer, yeah, okay. So basically, um, I, I talked about uh, their placemaking and sort of how, how they wanted these internal courtyards to really be the focus of, uh, of, these, um, of this development. So that's, that's the BIM model that uh, they come, came up with. So this is the southern, southern view, and this is the, the, the view from the north, so that's where uh, the communication is happening. Right, so uh, basically around these, um, these courtyards, uh, they have a lot of uh, balconies, walkways, and um, so these are some, some details that they were able to, to get out uh, from the model and then uh, develop develop further. This is how, how um, basically the renders from, from those places look like. These are some of the, the walkways. The pitched roofs are, are one of, uh, sort of important design statements uh, in, in the project. But what I want to talk about Today, this was an introduction to uh, to the project. What I want to talk about is optimization of the workflows. As architects, um, everyone tends to use um, a design software. It doesn't matter which one it is. You'll be using it uh, for most days and for most of your time. 
So to optimize how you use that software, the tool which you use and the technology is really, really crucial. So the, one of the design challenges, as I said before, for Sean Harrington Architects was how to uh, develop this site in, uh, in an efficient way. So they came up with a scheme to, to uh, develop three separate models, right? So this is the first model. That's the second model. And this is the third model. But in order to overcome uh, repetition of these, uh, of these parts, then they modeled uh, repetitive units and referenced them into each one, in, into, into these files, basically. So that's the original, and then they referenced it in. So roughly, that's how their project setup uh, looked like. Okay, so they had things referenced into things, referenced into things, referenced into things, referenced into things, and then in the end they had this huge federated model from which they were trying to get information from. So I'm just going to follow one, one thread. So for example, they have a bathroom type A. Bathroom type A is referenced into flat type uh, 1. Flat type 1 is referenced into uh, a repetitive unit. Repetitive unit is referenced into, um, into building model 1. Then building model 1 is referenced into a federated model. Now you're asking basically for that model to go back and ask building model one, then building model one needs to ask the repetitive unit, then the repetitive unit needs to ask the, the flat type, flat type uh, needs to ask the bathroom what is uh, the door code for, uh, for the door in the bathroom type A, okay? So you can see how you can have problems when you ask this monster of a file to uh, give you a door schedule for all the doors that you have in your project, right? So we actually, uh, fortunately, they, they understood that they, that they had a problem. And they called us uh, as Vectorworks in to try and help them optimize uh, their workflows and optimize their model in according to best, uh, best practice recommendations and to use the software actually how we recommend it to be used. So even at, at that late stage uh, of um, Ooh. Okay. So even at that late stage of uh, development, uh, we were able to uh, rework how how their project was set up and how their files were set up in order to uh, maximize. Well, in order to enable more straightforward flow of data. So basically, what we did is we got rid of some of those of those links, and we applied what we uh, what we call a three tiered uh, three, three three tiered referencing and project setup structure. So the first tier is basically your resources. So that's where your apartment types, bathroom types, uh, wall types, and everything is stored. And then you bring that into these repetitive units. And then you bring the repetitive units into, well, that's your model. Uh, that's where you're modeling. That's your uh, model tier, the second tier, is where you work. Okay? And then the third tier is where you uh, 
get your uh, construction information from your, uh, your plot tier or uh, production tier. So basically, now if you want to get your schedules from, uh, from there, then it's a pretty straight, uh, straight line for, uh, for the flow of that information. And we were able to, uh, to help them get uh, enable to enable the unobstructed data flow uh, at that document production stage, helping them to, to get out that information uh, faster and more efficient. So uh, another thing that they were struggling with were the file sizes, because at that very, very bottom, when they were trying to get that information out, the file sizes were just huge. And it was clunky, it was not efficient to work with. They were wasting a lot of time, basically, just trying to uh, navigate those files and trying to access the data which was, which was in there. I often compare that to sort of uh, a drawer, really. If, uh, if you have a big drawer and if you just keep chucking uh, papers inside, then good luck finding the one you need after, after months of, sort of filling it up with, with papers. If you keep everything sort of in folders, tidy, you know exactly where things are. You, and that's, that's really that diagram of sort of accessing the information directly. Okay, so we, we basically optimized their entire workflow on a project which was already at the stage where it was very much developed and sort of approaching, approaching tender stage to so having a lot of information in. Fortunately, they had a, some time to, uh, to rework their, their, their project setup, but it's certainly something that they will be looking to, uh, to employ on future projects. So uh, it enabled them to have better project management and better resource management, because now instead of, sort of importing those everywhere in all of their files, there is that three-tiered uh, three structure. And also it enhances their quality of IFC exports and the ability to collaborate with their consultants because one of the reasons that we got called in is because they just couldn't extract certain information that was nested deep into these references. Okay, and so basically uh, the value of, of these kind of workflows and the value of, uh, of data and of information and of, of the BIM workflows is you have a single model where all of your uh, all of your data is stored and then you're able to tap into that and get that information from the, all the associated views associated schedules and everywhere it also reduces dramatically the risk of oversight because basically once you uh, once you have done something to your model then it, it sort of uh, applies that across all of your associated um, construction documentation. So basically, uh, the use of data in, on, on large projects, on projects like these, um, well, I mean, the project that, that you were talking about was much, much larger, but uh, sort of in any, any kind of scale, um, you know, it enables options, it enables you to explore uh, different things, it enables you to run simulations, to test your design and to test sort of, to also um, show these to clients and to, uh, to make them aware of your design and to, to show them, uh, you know, that how you uh, went for, why you went for those design choices that you that you have, data can also be visualized. So uh, basically, you can show those things to uh, to people that you work with. You can, if a piece of data is in there in the model, you can use it. 
So you can extract it as data. You can visualize it like that. For, for example, these are uh, fire ratings. Um, fire ratings, which are attached to these components and visualized as as uh, as data. So, just to summarize, basically, what um, what we together with uh, with Sean Harrington were able to to deliver on on this project was uh, to enhance their BIM BIM skills and uh, enhance their BIM workflows which they can now um, continue forward and they're very much uh, you know in the learning process this is not a finished uh, article there is uh, still a way to go and there is always uh, there are always workflows that you can uh, learn and that you can employ to make your projects better they started using project sharing uh, which is another sort of feature that we've enabled them uh, to do to, to make their work more efficient. Uh, the quality of their data processing is much, much better right now because they don't have things uh, nested any longer. They can access all of the data that they've input in their models. The delivery of information, so in that last stage when you've when your work is basically done you need to share it with other people you need to deliver drawings you need to deliver schedules that has been uh, enhanced as well and better uh, collaboration via IFC so uh, a crucial thing for uh, for these uh, BIM BIM level projects Thank you.